I asked Instagram what I should do with this bolt of fabric and well, I guess we should discuss my next project in my historical Disney series. Back in March, I was working on organizing my stash fabric and I found this purple polyester taffeta that had about 12 yards on the bolt that had no project assigned to it. And so I thought I would just ask Instagram, what kind of Disney character should I make out of this fabric? There were a lot of really great answers, but the comment, something mid-Victorian with Ariel's dress from The Little Mermaid 2, lived in my brain rent-free and I just had to do something about it. I figured since we're already doing this like poll taking thing on Instagram stories, why not have Instagram stories vote on the design elements that I'm going to incorporate in this design of this new ball gown that I'm going to make. I narrowed down the skirt ideas until we got to this double flounced, lacy, confectionate pink goodness of a skirt. And that is how we decided the base of the skirt on this costume. Then we moved on to the bodice. And this is where the race became really close between sleeve designs, lace designs, Bertha designs. There was just so many factors to consider. We finally arrived at this image and this is kind of where we are gonna pull our like ideas together and make this 1850s version of Ariel from The Little Mermaid 2. That's a lot to say. <laughs> so now that all of the design elements for this ball gown have been chosen, it was time to sketch out a design. <laughs> My intention with this hand-drawn sketch was to digitize it and practice and learn some digital art skills along the way. However, I kind of just sat on this sketch for about three months. A lot of other things got in the way and it just stayed in my book. Until recently, I brought it out of the book and I started kind of working with Illustrator to make this a two more two-dimensional sketch. I will admit, I gave up a little bit when it came to the skirt and uh, the lace on top of the skirt, but I feel like I still have a general idea or I'm still portraying the general idea that I want to come across in this sketch of a garment or this digital sketch of a garment. So now that you have the, a gist of kind of what I'm going for with this gown, let's talk materials. I should start out by saying that I know polyester is not a historically accurate material. And I will also continue to say that this is not going to be a historically accurate version of this gown. This is going to be more of a historically adequate version. We're not trying to recreate history. I'm just trying to make something that would maybe fit in. So we are going more historically adequate like many of our other projects. I've also paired this darker purple with a lighter purple taffeta, which I also had in my stash, which, which I also have about 10 yards of. So I've got a lot of this taffeta to work with. Now I did go out and buy a rather cheap lace fabric so that I could make the lace ruffle bits on the flounces of the skirts. I was kind I was playing around with price here. I really didn't want to spend a lot of money on this costume since the majority of it is stash fabric. And I found a fabric, I will make sure to link it below, 
um, I think it was from fabric.com, that was a really nice lace with a really beautiful weight. It was over 40 inches wide, so I knew that I could cut it in half and add a scalloped edge to it and then like burn the edge to be able to create a lace versus buying a 12 or 15 inch lace trim that would probably cost a lot of money. So I went that route. I've also decided for the Bertha, there's this really beautiful lace detail on the Bertha, and I've decided that I'm gonna digitize that on embroidery and then stitch it out onto tulle. When you look pretty close at the images of this Bertha, it is an, it's a lace on tulle or on netting. So I feel like that this is pretty, like a good, like this got the ball rolling for me so I, I can kind of feel confident knowing that this is the way to go with this. Okay, so now we should also discuss the undergarments since I think it's extremely important to understand what goes underneath something like this in order to have something like this exist in the world. So the first thing that I plan to make for this garment is a, a chemise that sits off of the shoulder. Since the bodice is gonna sit off the shoulder, I do want a chemise that will um, have a very light sleeve that can fit into this sleeve and also sit on my shoulder versus wearing a tank top and just like hiding the straps in my corset because that is totally what I do and I have no shame about it. Then also, I really wanna make a new corset for this. I do have hopes and dreams someday to make an 1860s ball gown with an elliptical hoop skirt and I found this really beautiful 1860s Symington corset in the corset book. It's actually the book that's on the cover of the corset book, but I've always wanted to do a corded corset and I looked at some 1840s corset references that I have and none of them made me feel the way that this corset makes me feel. <laughs> it's as weird as that is. So I'm gonna be making this corset and I'm gonna be using a little bit of silk taffeta that I have for another project that I know I bought a few extra yards of. So I can, I can put aside about a half a yard to make this corset and I'm really excited. I'm also not going to be making a cage crinoline and it's because I've already made two and I have a video on it up here so please please check that out but I will not be making a cage crinoline and I also won't be making a flounced petticoat I already have one of those as well they both work so well together I just don't think it's necessary so after we've made the chemise and the corset we're gonna go right into digitizing lace for the embroidery and then I'm gonna make the flounced skirt and the bodice. And that's basically what you can expect for me from this project. My two main goals with this project is to use as much as I already have on hand as I possibly can. And then my second goal is to hopefully get it done for Planet Comic Con in Kansas City, Missouri. I am a cosplay guest and I'm judging the cosplay contest, which I'm very excited about. And I think that it would just add a little bit more magic to that weekend and that trip to have this dress and everything done for it. So uh, that's the goal. And if it doesn't happen for Planet Comic Con, it will 100% be done and worn at Dragon Con either way. So it will be seen. And that I think is the biggest motivation is this is actually the first costume I've planned in over, in a year and a half that has a place and a location that it's gonna be seen at, which is really exciting. <laughs> I'm very excited. Next week, I will be releasing the video on how I make the chemise and the corset for this costume. But if you don't wanna wait that long, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Casey Renee Cosplay. That's my members only website where you can help fund videos on this channel and you get extra perks like early access to videos, exclusive monthly live streams, digital patterns or digital embroidery files, and access to our members only Discord. The link is in the description of this video. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video and if you are as excited about this ball gown as I am, leave a mermaid emoji in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and until next time, may all your dreams come true.